there is something I'd like to just expand upon that the gentleman spoke about, and that is there, there is a, a separate area of rules and regulations that the USTA has that is not in the jurisdiction, as he said, of the state actors. But when the state actor acts, I believe it's in the best interest of the USTA to follow the lead of the state actor. For example, if someone is suspended for 30 days, under the concept of reciprocity, he should be suspended from membership at the USDA for the like period. When and if he's reinstated by a commission, he should be reinstated at the USDA. Now, the USDA, I think, was formed in 1932 or something. It had a whole bunch of regulatory powers and jurisdictions. And when each of these racetracks were all doing different things, there was a need for some uniformity. And we were looked to as the entity that made all these decisions, fines, suspensions. We had that power. When the first state commission uh, was put in place, followed by every other state commission that has racing, we lost that power. And I think we only get ourselves in trouble when we exercise power beyond our jurisdiction. As the gentleman said, we have separate areas of jurisdiction that are separate from that of the state actor. Falsifying registration papers, a whole bunch of different things. Being part of a, a, a syndicate to register a stallions or stallion shares by people who are otherwise are not in membership of the association. That's valid action by the USTA, in my opinion. Beyond that, I think we only get ourselves in trouble because we do have a Rule 1, Section 3, or 1.03, as Mr. Carson, uh, Carson said, and, and that requires us to keep membership of people who are not otherwise in membership of the USDA as a grant from our initial power, but because they hold a state license. So if you've got a state license, for the most part, you, you don't need a USDA credential. You don't need it. In many jurisdictions, that's not followed. In New York and New Jersey, I know for sure that you can't have the grant or denial of a state license based upon membership in a private entity like the USTA. Any more than a state could deny you a driver's license because you decided, or the American Automobile Association decided that you weren't going to have a membership. It can't be done, but some states still do follow a requirement that you must be a USTA member. So if a state reinstates someone who's been guilty of a violation and the USTA doesn't, sometimes that extends or enhances the penalty that that person has to endure. And I don't think it's, it's wise for us People may differ with me on this, but I don't think it's wise for us to follow that path. The second thing I want to bring up in, in my remarks is something that I heard that's very disturbing besides everybody else trying to kill the racing business, is I heard the person in charge of the Scientific Advisory Committee of HISA say that if they had to, um, go to a fentogram and call a positive test on a fentogram, they would. Well, I think it's ridiculous enough that they're calling positives on um, picograms, which is a trillionth of a gram. A fentogram, believe it or not, is a thousandth of a picogram. Now, if the attitude is that that's where the scientific advisory committee that the thoroughbreds have basically um, made sure they control. After a fentogram, there's a thing called, Dr. Malin told me, an atogram. That's a thousandth of a fentogram. There's also something called a septogram. That's a thousandth of an atogram. My point is, where does the stupidity stop? And all that this is doing is not finding something that's pharmacologically effective in a horse, not in the least, but something that is, is detectable in the slightest and smallest amount. 
and and everyone talking about this fella having a positive and this guy getting two years and a, a twenty-five thousand dollar fine and what some of the thoroughbred people are experiencing now is unfortunately what we at the USTA, the majority of this board believes is coming to us. And if this comes to us, that's going to shrink the population, shrink the entire industry, because I don't know how anyone could do, I don't know how a trainer can sustain himself with scientific analysis that can go to right now, right now, this fentogram. It's only going to get a lot worse, and I think we've got to be very sensitive to what we're buying into. We're lucky enough today to have someone who sees this the same way, who's on the thoroughbred side, as many of the thoroughbred horsemen are, and that's Mr. Eric Hamelback, the CEO of the National HBPA. Would you stand up, Eric? This gentleman has been involved in, in the fight with us on behalf of the thoroughbred horsemen. He's been to Washington with us. He's part of the litigation that, that's ongoing uh, on behalf of the thoroughbred horsemen because some thoroughbred horsemen actually recognize what the problem is here. Um, and as I said, it's not going to get any, any better at all. And just to go back to SRIF one more time, I do happen to know that they have produced data and evidence that they have brought to various commissions. The problem is whether or not the commissions or law enforcement or a district attorney will act upon the data that's given them. They can't force them to do that. They can only hand them the plate and ask them to proceed with the evidence that they've given them. Unfortunately, some commissions don't want to be bothered. And that's one of the problems that we continue to face. That, that concludes my remarks, but I just want everybody to to actually know the definitions of these various grams and how ridiculous this whole thing is, is becoming and how bad it is for our game. Um, uh, I have a housekeeping item. According to Don Bry, a motion is in order to accept the bylaw amendment at this point in time. We usually do it at the end of the meeting. The bylaw amendment, which would extend the term, uh, the one year term to two year terms of all of the officers other than that of the president, which remains as it has been a four-year term, of which um, during this term, three years are yet to be uh, completed. So I'd like to have a motion to approve, I think it's bylaw amendment number 27, which the long and the short of it is it includes, it, 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 it extends the term from one year to two years of all of the offices other than the president. All in fa any discussion on this motion? All in favor of the motion? Aye. Any opposed? So from the number uh, in attendance, um, I conclude that we have reached two-thirds of the members of the board who are present at a minimum of 31.6 or something like that. So this passes. Um, there was no uh, contested election this year for any of the uh, officers of the United States Trotting Association. So accordingly, uh, Russell Williams has been reelected as president to fill the unexpired term of, I think, three years. Um, I have been reelected as chairman of the board. Vice chairman has been Mark Lowy, treasurer Jim Miller, and the secretary is Michelle Kopiak. Um, so I would ask for a motion to seat the officers similar to the motion I asked for to seat the directors. Do I have such a motion? Is there a second? Any discussion on that motion? Having heard none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Okay, thank you.